momentarily. But before we do that, I want to move off the Bucks for just a minute. I want your other thoughts on the NFL draft. What what else do we need to look for on Thursday night, Friday night, et cetera? Um, g- give me something interesting here for us to pay attention to. I got to cop out the three letters T U A Tua. Where does he go? And does somebody make the big move like we were just theorizing a few minutes ago to jump up in front of Miami at five? Does Miami go ahead and jump up to try to grab him? And and look, you you talk, uh, Chris, about these different personnel guys. I was just watching ESPN uh, a little while ago, and I'm listening to Mike Tannenbaum, who was deposed, dumped by the Miami Dolphins for a bunch of bad personnel moves who's on the air talking about how there's no comparison. You take Justin Herbert and you don't take Tua Tagovailoa, and I'm just laughing like I'm laughing right now. Did we watch the same games? Did we watch Justin Herbert struggle in the Pac-12 for a lot of the last couple of years? At times looks great, but a lot of times struggle. And we look at a Tua who was lethal in the SEC, the highest level of football in college football, and we're going to compare those two guys and say – Take Justin Herbert because he's the prototype 6'5 quarterback with the bigger arm, please. Uh, to me, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, it's, it's idiotic that you would take Herbert first. And I think uh, the Dolphins or someone else may be jumping into that top five to grab him. That is, that's what I'm most intrigued about early on in this draft. And who is that? And, uh, and from there, let's just see. Uh, how the rest of the first round starts to unfold. I'm obviously very curious about whether the Bucks can get an offensive lineman. Do they trade up? Do they trade back? But, uh, yeah, they're, they're, the receivers, Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs, C.D. Lamb, your guy Justin Jefferson out of LSU, how many receivers are going in this first round? Is it four of them? Is it five of them? Uh, how many of them go quickly in the top ten? Is there a run on receivers in the top ten, top 15? We'll see. We'll see what the, that, that's – that's what's going to be amazing. Um, I, I will leave you with this. We always think we have it figured out in the NFL draft and, and, and know what teams are going to do. And then, like I was watching the other night in the 89 draft, everybody, everybody thought Tony Mandrich was going to be the greatest tackle to play pro football. And ESPN was replaying the 89 draft. And the, the Packers end up taking Tony Mandrich instead of taking Barry Sanders. And the Detroit Lions said, thank you very much. And Barry Sanders is in the Hall of Fame. So we think we know, but really we don't know And uh, with a lot of these guys. And so that's part of the drama, part of the reality TV, for sure. You got that right. This is, uh, it, I mean, it is being billed as one of the most unpredictable drafts that we have ever had. Uh, and I cannot wait for it. I can't wait to see what your bucks do. I can't wait to see what anybody else does. <laughs> So, yes, we're, we're all interested. And, again, if that Chicago Bulls debut documentary the other night, which was phenomenal, where we already know what's going to happen. The Bulls win the championship in the last dance, right, in the, six, in the 10-part series. But the debut episode had 6.5 million people watching. Incredible for something that where we know what's going to happen. And now we got something where we don't know what's going to happen on Thursday night. We don't know who's going to trade and who, do, who does what. There's going to be 15 or 20 million people. They're going to be watching this tomorrow night. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be college football playoff numbers. It's going to be insane. And I I cannot wait for it. TJ, you are the best. Everybody go find him on Twitter, at BuckSidelineGuy. He is the host of the Three Dog Thursday podcast. You can find that on Twitter, at Three Dog Thursday. Uh, TJ, you are a blast. Thank you so much for jumping in, brother. Winning cures everything, dudes. I always love being with you. Yes, on Three Dog Thursday, find the podcast. Lots more on the draft, on some gambling odds, on the Alabama guys, uh, and more on Three Dog Thursday. So thank you for that plug. Viva la draft, the NFL, coming up. We are looking forward to that. Always great to be with you. See you later. Of course. Be good, brother. TJ Reeves. Good gracious. Yes, everybody go follow him uh, at... Buck Sideline Guy, at Three Dog Thursday on Twitter. And make sure you subscribe to his podcast. He's, uh, I mean, he does it all. He does it all. He's also hosting the uh, the official Bucks Draft radio show on their flagship station and on the Buccaneers app. So if uh, if you want to follow in on the Bucks, you can go knock that out. Chris, uh, it, is there anything else we need to hit today? I hadn't seen any breaking news here lately. Got a little breaking news right now. Do we? A little sports related. Okay. Next month, golf is going to reboot the match and it is official that it will be tiger phil peyton and tommy wait peyton and tommy yep 
Wow. That is uh, I, just, I just got it across the wire on on Yahoo while while he was going. While you wow, we're, we're wrapping that up. It is it is official. I'm trying to get a date. The That's, money is going to go. They're going to raise money for COVID relief. Um, huh. That's okay. Okay, I'm in with that. I'm in with that. It, uh, all right. So they're all. Oh, Michael just so jumped in. There's even more break. Uh, Trey Burton to Indy. Okay, I can get down with that. So. So the event is going to have a $9 million prize, okay? Oh, no, they're saying Mickelson. Oh, this is just rebooting last year. They're, they're rehashing out what happened last year. All right. Um, I don't have a date. I'm not seeing a date. It's going to be on TNT this year, though. Uh, that's Didn't they move some Way of that better. to TNT last year? No, it was on pay-per-view last year. Yeah, but I, I thought they uh, I thought they moved, like, the uh, the last they re- part of it. They might have re-aired it, but they didn't, it, uh, it maybe never so. played live on TNT. Yeah, because a lot of people were having trouble with the pay per view. That was uh, that was strange. That was strange. Um, I can't, I can't find, I can't find any date. It just says they're going to do it next month. Is all it says. Okay, so they may just be, they may be hashing out the details, and they just wanted to go ahead and announce it. Yeah, I could, probably. I could buy that. I could buy that. Okay, yeah, I'm it, good though. with that. I'll take it. I'm good with that. So McKinnon did jump in on uh, Facebook. He said, "Love my Auburn Tigers. They weren't great last year, but they gave Herbert all they wanted and more." I'm damn glad to be rid of Tua as an Auburn fan. So, yeah, I mean, we, we've we been through all of this. We understand that uh, Tua looks better on tape, uh, but Justin Herbert does not have the medical issues that Tua does. So, and, and, and to be fair, though, I mean, so you and I talked a little bit this off camera. Tua has more issues than medical for non-college football fans, and we assume because we cater to all football and we love all football, these – NFL locker rooms are not that, okay? They are GMs. The reason Mike Tannenbaum is critical of Tua and and so in love with Herbert is because while Mike Tannenbaum watches highlight reels and he watches the film on all these guys, but he also assumes they're not playing equal caliber, you know, they're not playing with equal caliber either. So while the talent in the SEC is better, it's really only better at the top and yeah. Alabama played two tough teams all year, and he lost both of them. Now, Tua didn't play in both those games. Yeah. But he only played – they only played two good teams. The entire calendar year, they played two good teams. Yeah. So, you know, was he really tested? Herbert was probably tested more than him. So, they don't look at those things. They look at measurables, and they look at things that they can grade, things that they can quantify, all right? And, and if you listen to Mike Lombardi, I'm, I'm going to give him a spiel, and I'm, I'm pretty much going to regurgitate as much of it as I can. But go listen to the GM shuffle from today. This is Wednesday, uh, the twenty. What's today? The twenty second version of the GM shuffle, and he he covers this well. It's it's not that there are knocks on Tua and people watch him play and they don't like him. They they have to grade him. Okay, they grade yeah. every player, and so they give him a grade. But then next to him, he's got three red flags. It's not just medical. He's got medical. It's going to give him an X. He's got a U for being undersized. And immediately everyone starts saying, whoa, 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 we got all these other quarterbacks that are undersized too. Outside of Drew Brees, none of those quarterbacks have been great, okay? We thought Baker wasn't going to be bad and the size wasn't going to affect him, and then we realized, oh, maybe he's not as great as we thought they were. We got like six minutes of Kyler Murray. We we don't really know. So, so he is undersized. It's a red flag. And then the third thing is speed. He didn't run the 40, so therefore – they're assuming that he said any general manager out there, if a player doesn't run the 40 in a pro day or at the combine at all, and you don't have tape of them being elite speed, you assume they are slow. Yeah. So he's going to have an X next to his name for every general manager out there, all 32. He's going to have a U next to his name, and he's going to have an S next to his name. And he said he's going to have three markers to identify red flags. And while we say – Look at the tape, look at the tape, look at the tape. I'm a big look at the tape guy. Tell me, can you play, can you not? I understand these people that say, when I watch his highlight reels, I can make anybody look good in a highlight reel. Yeah. And I don't really know all of these guys he's playing against because TJ brought it up. It's not apples to apples like it is in the NFL. You can look like a badass offensive lineman when you got to play against all these soft teams, you know. But but when you play against Clemson, how did you look? Well, I got one tape. I might only have two quarters of tape where I can actually really evaluate somebody yeah. on what they are and what they're not. 
it's hard to do. It's yeah. really hard to do. It really is. why you have to measure. It's why they check all these other things. That is also the reason you get Mitchell Trubisky over um, Deshaun um, Watson. Deshaun Watson. That's yeah. that's why. It, it's why Patrick Mahomes goes twelve instead of you know top five. Well, the argument is really Mitchell and Watson. It wasn't really home, Mahomes. Mahomes had red flags too. Yeah, Mahomes that's, that's had, what I'm had saying. A lot of things with him. But but the biggest thing is is while what hurt Mahomes was strictly the fact of Texas Tech. That's yeah. it. The stink of Texas Tech of how great was he? Every quarterback that has played there for the last twenty years has put up gaudy numbers, and none of them have been good pros. Yeah, I think you're so, right. So there's a stigma there that hurt Mahomes. I get that. That stigma was not there for Watson, but they 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 saw Watson's tape, and everybody inside said Watson's better than him. But he's got he's got markers next to him. He's got red flags. I. I at least understand that. I don't. I don't always agree with it, but I can yeah, see so, how thirty teams could say I'm not interested in this guy. Now it only takes one or two teams to be interested in him and say I'm going up and getting him. Yeah, no, that's that's 100 percent true. McKinnon jumped in. He asked GM Shuffle podcast. Yes, GM Shuffle. Uh, GM Shuffle podcast. So give him a plug. Whether you like Lombardi, you hate Lombardi. Lombardi has been in a lot of front offices. He yes. knows what he is talking about. The guy worked under Bill Walsh, Bill Parcells, and Bill Belichick. And he will tell you the best Al Davis stories of all time. His <laughs> his favorite draft that he gets criticized for relentlessly is the Jamarcus Russell draft. And people criticized him for the Jamarcus Russell because he was a front office guy during that time for the Raiders. And he said, I wasn't even in the building. Al sent me on an errand because he knew I wouldn't let him make the pick. Lane Kiffin, two hours before that draft, great story, is calling up Lombardi, knowing Lombardi's going to get fired as soon as this draft is over with, saying, how can we talk him out of this? How can we talk him out of this? And that's just one of those situations where the owner said, it's my team. It's my team, yeah, and I'm I taking want who this I want. guy, and I don't care what – Every scout, every coach, every professional that says, I don't care. I'm getting my guy. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You are 100% right. Uh, Michael jumped in on Twitch. He said, I wouldn't take either early. Teams are just too desperate for quarterbacks. Uh, yeah. I mean, you need to build the team around the quarterback before you even get the quarterback. So I, we, like we it's why the Dolphins don't need a situation where none of these guys are great. We assume that there's a great quarterback that comes out of every draft. And, and, and there's a world in which neither one of these guys turns into Watson or Mahomes, and they all are Trubisky. And, and we need to remember that that's a possibility. That, that Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, Josh Rosen draft that we all thought was going to be all three big quarterbacks, could it be Eli Rivers and Ben? Hell no. It, Baker's the only one that's got a chance to maybe be good. And and I don't know. I got to see massive improvements this year or I'm out. I'm yeah. out. I just think that could have. So we all left that draft and we all thought we got three quarterbacks that are all going to be elite and they're going to change the league. And brother, we, nope. it's just, it's just not how it worked, man. You got a whole year where all of them are bust. That's yeah. okay. It's going to happen. Yeah. That happens from time to time. It is what it is. It is what it is. Chris, this has been fantastic. We will be back again tomorrow. We're going to do a shorter show tomorrow because I mean, we're going to be live streaming for two and a half hours tomorrow night. Uh, but we'll jump in with some news. Whatever is hot, whatever's going on, we are going to get on here and talk about it. If you would, share the show out. We appreciate all of you guys for jumping in. Michael said, thanks, fellas. Always enjoy it. We always appreciate you guys for jumping in the comments. You uh, you help make this show run on a daily basis. We definitely Thank you. We do appreciate, appreciate it. it. Share it out. Tell somebody about it. Yes. Thank you. Yes, and leave a nice review. Make sure you are subscribed to the podcast. Subscribe on Facebook, Periscope, Twitch, and YouTube, and the podcast, of course. Subscribe everywhere. Do all that thing. Um, we're going to go ahead and get out of here, I believe. There's still people jumping in the chat, but you guys can keep talking. Do your thing. We appreciate you guys. Uh, go to winningcureseverything.com. We will see you all again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show. Leave a